ready to keep their microphone muted. We're going to start with the suppressed history of America and chapter, you already told me, Mahmoud, chapter 7, Giants in Ancient America. Mahmoud has written his summary. Mahmoud, would you please read what you have for us? This article describes giants, giants in ancient America. This is a prominent subject in all the world mythologies. Despite reminds of ancient giants in America are scarce, but evidence, both empirical and anecdotal, does exist. You will find a surprising number of stories about discovering concerning giants by reading the various newspaper and town journals and some of serious investigator and stories about similar sensational discoveries continue to this very, very day. After you finish this article, you will decide this is a good story for your children because there was no real science to back anything up just all the newspaper article and word conjecture with some fantasy. I was expecting a more sober approach to the legends of giants in the America with evidence that is more credible. The bulk of the essay is reproductions of news story, so you ask yourself if hundreds of skeletons were found in the 19th century. Why don't we all learn about this uh, material in school or by adult when we was young? Bottom line, a lot of research has gone, gone into this essay and it, like, it will likely leave you wondering. Maybe it had interesting ideas but the execu execute them poorly. Wow, I absolutely loved it. That's a great summary, Mahmoud. It was a little bit technical. Some of your vocabulary was uh, difficult. I don't think it was necessary. You could have made it easier, but I really enjoyed your overall summary and your opinion and your bottom line summary at the very end. Excellent job. Of course, there are some grammar problems, a uh, few pronunciation uh, things we need to fix, but overall, it was really great. By the way, from our last book club meeting a couple weeks ago, I told you I was going to record the uh, summaries. I did, and you wouldn't believe the horrible audio quality. I've been having very bad audio problems um, I think yesterday I was able to fix a lot of them. So I don't know if I'm going to re-record the last summaries, but today if you send in a summary, I will record it for you guys, uh, and we'll put it up there so you can listen. So Mahmoud, what I'm going to do today or this week, I will fix the grammar, and uh, I will make a recording. But let me go ahead and read through what Mahmoud basically wrote here. Uh, the article describes giants in ancient America, and it says it's a prominent subject in all the world's mythologies. Mythologies, Despite remains of ancient giants in America, despite the remains are scarce, what happened? Um, evidence does exist, both empirical and anecdotal. We can get rid of that, but anyway, that's fine. I'll do that later. Uh, you'll find a surprising number of stories about uh, discovering giants in newspapers and town journals. Some are serious, some are pretty crazy. Um, after finishing this chapter, you might decide it's a good story for your children because there's no real science to back any of these stories up. The only thing we have are old newspaper articles and some weird ideas with a lot of fantasy. 
I was hoping for a more sober approach. I like that, a more technical, a more uh, academic uh, approach to these legends of giants. Uh, but the bulk of the essay, the majority of the essay, was just a reproduction of old stories. A bottom line, a lot of research went into this essay, and it will likely leave you wondering. I, that's such a great expression. Uh, maybe it has interesting ideas, but the author executed them poorly. Excellent. I, I think it's great. Really well written, well thought out. Uh, I have to agree with you on these uh, analyses. And great job. I'm going to fix the grammar and re-record it for you, Mockwood. Any questions? Very good. Uh, yeah, I agree. Thank so. you. Yep. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Okay. I think perhaps Eva also sent in her summary. Yes, I did. Great. That's, uh, I'd argue if I could. <laughs> did you put it in the chat room, Eva? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Santa, can you copy that over? Marwa has such a bad connection, she says she's going to take off. Yeah, this is tough. I know, guys. When the connection is bad, it's no fun. Uh, Marwa did send in her summary, so we'll get that read, too. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't care about spelling. We can fix that later. Uh, go ahead, Eva. Why don't you read over your summary, please? Okay. So, Giants in uh, ancient America. The introduction of this chapter refers to Bible, tales for children, myths, and the general idea of reading the race of the giants in our world before our race appeared. Then there are mentioned many different sources describing our places on the American continent where explorers met people of enormous height in different situations. Newer resources point to discoveries of bones which, as they suppose, belong to people of extremely big people. The end of the chapter is a kind of mystery connected with the missing pages of the report from Lewis and Clark's expedition which should have contained uh, the information about the evidence of the giant people living in the area. Great job. Once again, a super summary. The chapter was uh, obviously much, much longer, but... Oh, yes. But, but I'm very sorry for spelling. I, I uh, was in a hurry, and uh, so the capital letters, and so I, I, I can see many... Um, <laughs> yeah, that's mistakes. that's no problem. Don't worry about that. I, yeah, um, when I type quickly, I make mistakes too. I know you were typing fast. Uh, very good summary, and she uh, was managed to take that chapter and bring a very small picture of it. But yes, it gives us a great idea of what was mentioned. Not a lot of detail, but if you read this summary and if you're interested in the idea of giants then I, I think you would want to uh, read more. So that's an excellent idea. That's the idea of a summary. It doesn't tell you too much information, but it tells you enough that if you're interested, you want to read more. And that's exactly Make what you do. Curious. That's right. <laughs> makes you curious. It builds your curiosity. That's right. Excellent. Uh, any questions about this? Anything you want to add? I, I'll fix the spelling and the grammar, Eva. Don't worry about that. Okay, so I think that it was mm, many, many details, and um, right. I can't remember everything. That's why I um, I do so much um, general uh, sentences. That's fine, and that's the idea of a summary. Um, you know, it's not a a review, so to speak, but a summary is you take that huge chapter or that huge book and 
in one or two paragraphs, you tell the story. Um, that's the whole idea. So it's actually a good thing to read the chapter and then two days later write the summary um, after you think about it a bit and uh, after you forget the details that aren't important, sometimes that's okay. But, you know, um, I, um, I went through this chapter um, last week and uh, several days I only thought about this, how, how to put it together, how to connect the ideas. <laughs> yeah, perfect job. And that's exactly uh, how I felt it came out and that's what I want. It's great. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep. All right. Santa, I think you have Marwa's there too, don't you? Ah, uh, it's in the chat room, I think. There we go. Good. All right, and I will read this. Now, there are going to be mistakes here and there, uh, so I'll do my best to fix as I go. Marwa, uh, Marwa is here. Can you hear me, Marwa? Would you like to speak, or is the connection really bad? And she, not, she might not be able to hear. Uh, so I'll go ahead and read this. Worlds, Legends, Holly. It's not Holly, it's Holy, so let's take out an L right there. Uh, and once again, I'll fix grammar later. World Legends, Holy Books and Children's Stories Around the World mention an age of giants. And in this case, actually, the A and the G should be big A and big G. Tales of American Giants are preserved in the conquistadors' writings. If it's plural, it's got to be plural, in the early 16th century. They reported that a large settlement inhabited by giants was found, a large was found, along the Gulf of Mexico. It was reported also that few uh, that explorers met hundreds of giant warriors near the Grand Canyon, as well as in the Indies and Nevada. Um, so we got a geography problem, uh, but uh, I'll fix that later. The giants were described as three feet taller than the others, and their leg bone as long as a normal man. Most of them were killed or died during battles. We don't know which battles, so battles and their remains were all lost, rotten by the soil, or fell into the private collectors who whisked them away. In an Indian legend, these giants denied the existence of the great spirit. So, they were all drowned in the flood. That's an interesting story. I like that one. Uh, everybody probably is familiar with uh, Noah, Noah's Ark, and the great flood from centuries ago, which killed everybody, all the bad people on earth, except Noah and his family, and the animals that were on the Ark. What's really interesting this is the story, in the Bible we call it the story of the Great Flood, with a big G and a big F. The Great Flood. Um, and the Great Flood has uh, not only appeared in the Bible, they talk about it in ancient Asia, they talk about it in ancient North America, they talk about it in ancient South America, this, uh, they talk about it in other cultures, too. This is something that is common around the world. So for most of us here, I think we're familiar with the Bible's version, uh, the uh, Noah. But other cultures uh, have their own version of it, too. Isn't it interesting that the ancient Indians from America also had the same story? I think it's just quite interesting. Excellent job. That's a very good uh, summary also, once again. A little bit more detail than Eva's, uh, but that's fine. And I think, uh, oops, I think when you start talking about detail, 
that's where problems can occur. Uh, so, for example, the Can uh, Grand Canyon Indies in Nevada, there's an order problem there. So we have to be careful when we give uh, lots of information. Once again, uh, I want you guys to read the history book with a map, with a map, so that it's easy for you to kind of see what is happening the chapter of giants was a very interesting chapter, actually a very easy chapter, not too difficult, lots of repetition, lots of interesting stories. And I had the same feeling as Mahmoud did. I wish there had been a bit more science, not only conjecture, uh, theory, or opinion, but uh, I did enjoy the chapter. The next chapter, which we will read uh, which we will have for the next uh, one is The Hero Returns. The Hero Returns. If you have the book, it's chapter 8. The audio book, I guess, is, I don't know which chapter it is, 10, I think? It's kind of different in the audio book. But, yeah, The Hero Returns will be the next chapter. If anyone else has a summary of The Giants, please email it to Santa. And if we get it quickly, I'll be able to check it. Otherwise, we will put it in the next newsletter. Any questions from anybody on this chapter of Giants? Yeah, it's not only... You go ahead, rehab first. Uh, yeah, my question is actually related maybe to grammar. Yeah. Uh, you've written... Yeah. You've written Noah on his families. Is it okay to say his families? Uh, no, no, no. Or... Noah, and, Noah and his family. Yeah, it should be Noah and his family. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Good. Thank you. It's possible. I'll, I'll tell you, though. It is possible to say Noah and his families. Um, mm -hmm. if, if we think... Um, I'm going to take... Uh, no, I won't. If we think... Yeah, I, I'm going to... Sorry, hold on a second. Do, 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 do. How do I do this? Make me the presenter. All right. Give me a second, guys. Screen. So if, if we take uh, uh, Noah, this is Noah right here, and then he has a, a, a son... Oops, and another son, and a daughter, and a daughter, and then they get married, and they get married, you know, this is a family, and this is a family, and, and she has a family, and she has a family. Now it's Noah and his families, and then maybe maybe even there, maybe he's the grandfather or the great-grandfather, and they're the grand then it gets more and more into family. So it is possible to say Noah and his families, uh, but... I think I don't know the Bible well enough. I think it was just Noah and his family in this case, right? Okay, thank you. Good, good. Mahmoud, you wanted to say something? Uh, yes, I want to know your opinion. Uh, when we talk about uh, the giants, how is the bust length you? you imagine uh, three meter four meter for giants or someone catch the clouds or what yeah yeah that's a good question um, and what is what as I was reading it what was I thinking <laughs> Julia you need to meet your thank you um, so when I was thinking of when I think of a giant I always have in my mind once again from the Bible the story of David and Goliath uh, David, I think he was a young boy, and Goliath, you know, was a, a huge man. So when you say giant to me, uh, the Hollywood image of a giant, I don't think of, you know, like twice the size of man. That's crazy. Um, but three feet, four feet taller than me, yeah, I can, for some reason, that's kind of what I have in mind if I let my imagination go, then I can imagine some sort of Hollywood image of, you know, two or three times the size of a normal human. Uh, and you know what? 
if we go back to real ancient history uh, and you think about Peru uh, and Egypt and, you know, the big stones, maybe they had giants, you know, huge, huge people moving those stones around. I don't know. But, yeah, my image in my head would be, so for me, in American height, I'm just under six feet tall, nine feet, ten feet tall, which is about three meters. That would be a giant. Three, uh, if you had a group of people, all the people were three, over three meters tall, those are giants. Those are giants. So that's the image that I have. And... Yeah, maybe they did exist. Uh, I have no... I mean, think about this. Right now we have animals, and the animals are all nice size. But before they had dinosaurs that were just huge. I mean, unbelievably huge dinosaurs. So maybe there were huge humans or something like humans. I don't know. Yeah, Mahmoud, the world's tallest man. Yeah, uh, 2.72 meters. Yeah, Robert Waldo from the Guinness Book of Records. I remember as a child looking at the pictures of him. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, that's that's what I know, too. And he's huge. If you look at uh, NBA basketball players, oh, my God, two meters is huge. Two meters is huge. So 2.72 meters, oh, my God. God, that's amazing. I don't know. Sadaf is sending, ah, um, I don't think the, I don't know what you're copying, but it, it didn't work well. <laughs> it's a symbol. Someone is laughing. <laughs> uh, I see, I see. <laughs> About giant people. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. I'm I really think... happy to be meeting for the first time. I didn't do anything, but next session I promise to do something for the meeting. No, no, that's the, we always have people coming in for the first time, and uh, they they they're still learning what to do and where we're doing it. So don't worry, we're very happy to have you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to give control back to Santa. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Make the presenter. There we go. <laughs> like Gulia, not prepared but joined. That's fine. Okay, we're going to go to our next story, uh, the fantastic Mr. Fox. And here we have uh, Robert, who, who's busy, I guess, today with his family, but he sent his uh, review in. Can you show me, Santa, what does he have here? Oh. Uh did Robert draw these pictures or what? Who who where do these pictures come from, Santa? The original. Oh, okay, the original illustrations. Thank you. I don't even know. Once again, you guys, I didn't listen to the book. Uh, I'm being completely honest. Uh, so we have Robert's description here, and I will read that at the end. Who else? has a, uh, a summary. Who would like to read their summary? Mahmoud is first. Good. I, I will hear Mahmoud. Eva, do you have one? Yes, I sent to Mara, uh, to uh, Santa, I'm sorry. Okay, great. So we'll get that copied in there. Um, we'll have, uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Santa, can you copy in Eva's too? Let Santa get organized here. Eva, where did you send it? I don't, I don't see it. Did you email me? Oh, in the chat. Oh, I don't see it either. Can you do it again? Do it again, please, Eva. No, no, no. I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay.
Okay, so uh, what I want to do then, we have uh, Mahmoud, Eva, and Robert's summary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Mahmoud, then I want Eva to read hers, and then I'll read uh, Robert's. So Santa, show us Mahmoud's, please. And Mahmoud, please go ahead and read through your summary. This is a story about a brave, kind, fearless, and rubber, rubber animal called Mr. Fox. In addition, they're of menace, nastiest, and ugliest farmer named Buggies, Barnes, and Bean. In addition, there are Mr. Mrs. Fox and four small foxes and wonderful, friendly, wild animals. Mr. Fox and his family lived in a hole in a hill in the valley lived the three farmers. Every night when Mr. Fox searching for dinner to his family, he crept down the hill into the valley to steal food from the farmers to provide for his family. When the farmers know about Mr. Fox, they make a plane to kill the fox. Therefore, they crushing for, for him behind their guns outside the hall where the fox lives, and when the fox come out, they shot him, but they only shot his tail off before he skipped. When they felt the catch him, or caught him, they started to dig Mr. Fox's house, and when he heard the sound of the shovels into the soil, he started, he started with his family digging a tunnel under their house for their life, lives. But that by the time Buggies, Buns, and Bean were very tired after they digged a deep hole, however, because they had not come to the end of the fox's tunnel yet, they decided to use machine mechanical uh, shovels and starve out the foxes. Once the fox saw the sharp middle edge of one of the shovels, shovels, they keep digging. Mr. Fox, he is a loving, he is a loving fox who care about everyone more than he care and would never let anyone suffer. As a result, after three days where they slowly starving to death, he hatches a plane that will not only get them food but also give, give those terrible farmers a test of their own medicine. Now, all they have to do is start digging in a very speci special direction. So he has for so he has four children and a small brown browning browning mammals called Budger began to dig through to Buggy's chicken house, Bunces, <laughs> Turkey Farm and Bean Cider House and they took everything. Back in the tunnel Mr. Fox brings back a lot of food and shares it with the whole animal kingdom. The animal celebrated and feeds. The farmers are still waiting to this day. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Uh, you, you were reading too fast, uh, but I liked it. Uh, once again, very nice. Uh, you did a great job. I don't know how much of a summary it was. It sounded like the whole story but I enjoyed it. Very entertaining. Um, I will fix the grammar and a couple of pronunciation points, but uh, once again, very enjoying, uh, enjoyable. Thank you, Mahmoud. Welcome. Let me go back to Eva. Eva, now look at Eva. The size of Eva's summary, so much smaller. Let's see how we get it. Eva, I'm excited. Go for it. I apologize um, because um, it's not a summary. It's a critique. <laughs> a critique. Okay, that's okay. Yes. Um, okay. Who um, who is this story for? It's a picture of today's society. Who is right? Mr. Fox, who just steals from three horrid farmers, Logis, Guns and beans and feed his family, or three farmers who protect their property by any means, 
which costs much more than Mr. Fox sold for his family and friends. On the surface, it looks like a funny story with the element of sophisticated chase, um, especially some episodes. Oh, but in fact, it's a mirror of the world we live in, and it doesn't have an exit. Oh, wow. Interesting critique. I liked it. Um, yeah, this is something that I'll have to think about, too. Um, yeah, very good. I like both of you. Mahmoud earlier gave his critique at the end of his summary. This time, Eva has given a critique. Great combination, having a summary and also a critique. Uh, that's very helpful for me because I haven't read the story yet. So now after listening to Mahmoud's summary, to be honest, I didn't think I needed to read the story because he did such a good job. But now after listening to Eva's critique, aha, yes, I think I do want to read the story again and think about that. So yeah, I really like it. It's a good combination. Great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let me go down, let's take us down to Robert's section after you're done there, Santa. Um, and I'll read what Robert has. Here. I'm sorry? I think he's here. Oh, good, Robert. Robert, are, uh, have you joined us? Yeah, hello. Hi. Did you have a barbecue today? Uh, no. Today my wife has uh, much of ideas what to do around my home and I had to bring a lot of stones to my new water eye. So I was a little busy. <laughs> Your wife had you working outside. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's good. Your son didn't help you? Uh, yeah, he helped me, of course. Did you pay him? No, I don't have to yet. <laughs> so that's child labor. Uh, he's uh, 14. <laughs> and, not so small. Yeah, that's my dad. My dad abused me when I was 14 by making me do outside work too. <laughs> uh, he he just wanted to help me. So you have it's, a it's great. Okay. Side. He's, he's great. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's fantastic. Okay. Um, I don't know what to do. Ah, yeah, we'll worry about that later. That's okay. Um, so this is a review of the story, uh, the same story, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Santa, can you make your screen a little bit bigger? This, the words are a little small for me. I'm getting old. Oh, you got your percentage there. I think you can just increase the percentage on the bottom. Yeah, a little bit more, please. No, 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 the percentage. There we go. Oops. <laughs> uh, yeah, about 150. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's nice. Perfect. Okay. Um, and Robert, go ahead and read through it. All right. Tail seems to be quite average and look like even shallow. However, it's not the case. On the one side, we have three disgusting farmers. We don't like them at first sight. At the second side, we have Mr. Fox with his family. He is like a family man. He leaves uh, uh, their, their hole only uh, for bringing something to eat. They love each other. Just happy family. Someday, however, farmers decide to kill Mr. Fox. He steals birds from their farm. Farms should be. The chase is very brutal. The farmers are very determined to do their job at once. At first meeting, Mr. Fox lost his tail. He can, we can see the blood and pain, quite terrifying for children. Then, impatient... Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, 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 yeah. Then impatient farmers decide not to wait for going out for of Mr. Fox and trying to dig uh, Fox Hall. When it doesn't work, they decide to use horrible machines 
should be to dig faster and deeper. In this time, fox family digging bravely deeper and deeper. Even children working on it every uh, very heavily. Farmers with uh, uh, disappear. Uh, farmers with their machines digging as intensively that the hill on which Fox family had their hole completely ceased to exist. And after the next hour left, only huge pit and no uh, catching Fox. However, foxes are in trap. They cannot get out and have, and have nothing to eat. The farmers knew that and decided that they will wait until hunger will bring foxes out of the hole. Now we can see next a crew a excreation team excreation thing. Excreating. Uh, yeah, thanks. Excreating. <laughs> Difficult word. Uh, things uh, in this tale. A real and brutal hunger that takes fox uh, strain, strength away. Foxes starting starving, frightful for children as well. In spite of starving, Mr. Fox figure out how to rescue his family. They digging new tunnels to farms where he can at least take some food for his foxes. During this travel, uh, he sought out his friend, friends should be, uh, that we uh, that uh, were starving to and offering them feast. At the end, all met uh, at feast and can happily eat and drink, and farmers, of course, still waiting. Foxes in most tales uh, are very clever, sly, and even calculated. Here we meet a completely different fox, fantastic fox. He steals only for living. That was really interesting. However, author mentioned that is uh, that it is nature of foxes. He is using his uh, sly only for giving his family food or rescue, rescuing his uh, loved ones, relatives or friends and friends. Our Mr. Fox is not perfidious. He is like a family role model. He is responsible for his family and his happiness. He is here of his family and friends. Today, however, I've read today good uh, citation. Do I want to be a hero to my son? No, I like to be a, a very real human being. That's hard enough by Robert Downey. Junior. Great. Wow. Really nice. Really, once again, this is a combination of uh, what Mahmoud and Eva did for this one. It's a, quite a long summary, um, which is okay. I don't know the, the actual length of the story, so I'm curious. Uh, remember, everybody, a summary is retelling the story in a fraction of the words. So once again, a summary is the retelling of a story in a fraction of the words. Uh, regardless, it was great. I was able to follow along and understand quite well. I also appreciated your uh, critique at the end, how you felt about this story. And then your added quote also helps us uh, think about another aspect. Do you want to be a hero? No, I just want to be a real human being. Uh, I don't know how much we need to worry about Robert Downey Jr. with his uh, terrible past, <laughs> but um, yeah, being a good dad is, is such an important thing, and that's the idea of the story. The fox is not just an animal, but it's a father, so being a, a good dad is a, a big issue, and of course Robert has a son, so what is his mission in life? It's very, it's, it's great. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I, I will listen to these stories. I do have the audio book. I haven't listened to Fantastic Mr. Fox, but thanks to you three, I most certainly will listen to it, and I'll think about it, and if I have an opinion, I'll add it when I make a recording 
uh, of these uh, summaries. I'll fix all these summaries too. Don't make the summaries too long. You're going to kill me uh, regarding work. Uh, but uh, once again, I will do my best. I have a question for Mahmoud. Mahmoud, you were talking about the mechanical shovel. So this is actually for Gulia and Mahmoud. Mechanical shovel. We studied that word in DDM 3.12. Twelve? Three three twelve. Mayhem. Excavator. <laughs> do you do you remember the excavator? <clears throat> no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna take the screen away. Uh to show everybody here. Uh, 309, okay. It's actually 312. Can you guys see my screen? There we go. Uh, we studied uh, a guy who was destroying his house, and in one of the scenes, uh, we had an excavator. I put this in the, uh, the description, so you may not have seen it, but... Uh, yeah, I don't... <laughs> exactly, but I, I do, uh, I want you, I was hoping you would recognize this, um, and Gulia knows very good, very good. Uh, excavator, that's the word. And I'll just do a copy and we'll go to the internet just to double check that I'm right. You guys tell me, because once again, I didn't read the story. Excavator. Images. Is that right? Is that the machine that was digging and digging and digging? Yes. This called a tractor? No. Uh, well, tra in America, if we say a tractor, we think of farming. So if we say tractor in America, this is what we think of. You'll see in a second. There's a little bit of delay. So this is a tractor, and okay. we use it in the field. Hmm, okay. The way, and I'll tell you, each country uses these words differently. Um, so, you know, an excavator in America might be something else, uh, might be like a grader. We have something called a grader. I don't even know how to spell it. Oh, uh, grader? Is it grader? No, that's a cheese grater. Uh, grater. Yeah, it might be a grader. Graders might be considered excavators, too. Uh, or land levelers. They have different words in different countries. Um, so, uh, in America, all I can tell you is what we say in America. Uh, we learned uh, goon, yes. Goon we learned in Seinfeld, that's right. Goons can be giants. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, let me send this back to Santa. And we're about done, basically, today. We only had the one chapter there. Uh, make presenter. We only had the one chapter in each book. So, Santa, what's the next assignment in the Robert uh, or uh, Roald Dahl book? I always want to say Robert. Uh, bulldozer, right. right. We're waiting for Santa's screen. Okay, very good. Well, wait a second here. Santa works overtime doing all the text and everything. I'm not doing this stuff, everybody. The hero returns. Santa returns. <laughs> Santa's the hero. And the enormous... Crocodile. Oh, uh, these are the chapters, not Santa. <laughs> so the hero returns in the history book, and in the raw doll, the enormous crocodile. These are our next chapters. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep it at one. Keep it simple, not too stressful. It allows you guys to enjoy the story, to listen to it two or three times if you want, to think about it, and to make a summary. Now, once again, I want 
summaries. And the art of the summary is to take a story or a chapter and make it into one or two paragraphs. When you write the summary regarding your vo vocabulary, you don't need to use difficult vocabulary. You want, you can um, uh, think of your audience as, you know, a 12-year-old child. So think of vocabulary like that. Adding your critique is also super beneficial. And we've done this for books in the past. And uh, I want you guys to, uh, to continue to do that. So adding your critique like Eva and uh, Mahmoud did and also like Robert did, that's something that uh, we definitely can benefit from. Because once again, you can read a summary and you can think, oh yeah, nice book, and you're finished. But then if you listen to somebody's critique after you read the summary, you realize, aha, this actually might be uh, something I do want to read. So adding the critique is very important. Amir cannot hear, uh, but I think everybody else is okay. No. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to finish up there. Uh, Amir can hear now. I can hear. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, any questions on anything? Once again, I will fix the grammar. Last two weeks ago, I made a recording of your summaries. The audio quality was horrible. I've been working on my audio. I've been having big problems suddenly. Uh, so, this week, uh, I will make another recording of these summaries, and I will share it. I'm not sharing the last uh, audio recording because it was so horrible. The... It just the sound quality was bad. Any questions? Thank you. Yes. Coaching. I heard a yes. That was from Mahmoud. Go ahead, Mahmoud. <laughs> After that, we have DDM, right? That's right. We have DDM in one hour, and then again in uh, seven hours. I have another DDM. So if you, so Gulia and Mahmoud, perhaps I will see you in an hour. Yes, my question, which DDM? We have which number. Yeah, 309, 310, 311, 312. Okay. So if you have any questions on any of those DDMs, bring them. Okay. We're going to practice probably uh, 309 and 310. I don't know, but we'll, we'll see. But yeah, if you have any questions, bring them, okay? Okay. Great. Everybody, thank you so much. I will see you again in two weeks. And once again, I will make the audio, pro, uh, audio recording for these, and I'll share that with you. Uh, let's pray that my system is cooperating nicely. So, Jane. Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you very much. Absolutely. My pleasure. It's always great to have new people and to have more people. Uh, so uh, I hope that you're able to join us in two weeks, okay? Hopefully. Would you remind me by Gmail? Uh, well, this Santa takes care of it, so um, when the invitation goes out, we'll send it to you, okay? Okay, thank you. I introduced you to my brother also. He's 12 years old. But he really likes you and he watches your videos. That's excellent. I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> thank you very much. And he told me to thank you also. <laughs> thank you. I will tell him I'm very happy to help him. You're welcome. You're the best coach in the world, I think. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Happy. That's true. He's the first time I heard you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, okay? Thank Have you. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Koshin. Thank you, Santa. Bye, guys. Bye, Amir. See you, Eva. See you, Guya. Mahmoud. We have Robert, Sadaf, Santa. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Koshin. Bye. Take care. Take care, Amir. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Eva. Goodbye, Santa.